morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, uh, welcome to this new webinar of OMEP. Well, uh, I want to share to you that the new political agenda opens great opportunities to make progress in realizing the right for, of young children since birth. In this sense, the Transforming Education Summit convened in the past year in response to the global crisis in education in terms of equity, inclusion, and quality, emphasize that quality education, including that of early childhood, is the foundation of tolerance, peace, human rights, and sustainability. The summit provided a unique opportunity to elevate education to the top of the global political agenda and mobilize willpower, solidarity, and solutions to recover losses related to the pandemic, uh, to face structural factors of our unequal and unfair societies, sowing the seeds for transformation, to, to, for transforming education, and through it to the whole society. Likewise, the work conference on ECC and the Tashkent Declaration have become the agreed global framework to address poverty and inequalities, leave a legacy of healthy living in a sustainable planet, and guarantee well-being and human rights from birth. Even though governments have the central responsibility for this change, the international community and non-governmental stakeholders have also pledged to strengthen national ECC systems to ensure quality by developing capacities, tools, and guidelines for countries, and by providing advice and support for policy formulation and implementation. One of a MAP initiative to fulfill our commitments as a civil society organization is the 2023 seminar series, which is an opportunity to create a space for exchange and generate knowledge to develop quality ECCE and to orient public policies. Sustainable development is a lifelong learning process and an integral part of quality education that begins in early childhood education. Long-term sustainable development can be achieved only if individuals and societies change the way they, their, they think and act. Education is the key to achieving this transformation. Education for sustainable development means integrating priority issues into, into teaching and learning addressing climate change, disaster, uh, biodiversity, poverty reduction, and sustainable conception, economic and political relations, and all the dimensions of citizenship. OMEP community has been working for more than 14 years on the development of a pedagogy for education for sustainability to spread and reaffirm this perspective, one of the strategies of OMEP is to distinguish good practices through a world award. In this webinar, we especially appreciate the generosity of sharing their projects to Tania do Amaral Gomez from Brazil and Oginda Sonola, Oginda Mola Sonola from Nigeria. Thanks also to OMEP ESD Working Group and all the national committees that are committed with the project. We are very grateful with Ingrid Pramlin and Adriana Visnik Jebdit for leading this project, organizing and moderating this webinar together with the ESD team. We hope that the presentation of these projects will give educators and caregivers the possibility of broadening the knowledge, skills, and values to address interconnected educational challenges, make informed decisions, and take individual and collective action to enrich practices 
for early childhood education and to help to build a more fair and sustainable future for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mercedes, for your opening words. Um, I would like to say uh, hello and good morning and good afternoon wherever you are all over the world in behalf of ESD Award Group from OMEP. Um, ESD Awards are just one part of the uh, striving towards educational uh, and a sustainable future for young children. And it was established in 2010 um, by leading of Ingrid Pramling Samuelson. Up to now, more than 150,000 children participated into the project that were uh, making under the umbrella of ESD uh, of OMEP. And uh, more than 1,000 projects were developed and shared as a good examples of practice. Last year, we have also a 2022 Education for Sustainable Development Award, and we have the proposals from all over the world. Um, by the committee decided that the most inspiring and most comprehensive are those from uh, UK, which is uh, Early Childhood Education for Sustainability, SDG STEM resource by Diana Boyd, then uh, from South Korea to us, by us and for our change from Miss Sung Kim, and the two that you will, uh, that I'm pleased to share with you today, and that, that is one from Brazil, the Boana Lagoa, uh, from Tanya Duamar Gomez, and one from Nigeria, activity-based low-cost initiative from Ways to Experience Experiential Play, Learning and Development by Oinda Mola Sonora. So uh, many good projects and many good examples are uh, developed under the ESD awards. And I'm really pleased that you have a chance to be inspired by two of them today. So I, I'm very grateful to Tanya and to Oinda Mola to share with us their experiences in the projects and their ideas, uh, how to work with youngest children in uh, to reach the education for sustainability. Uh, so Tanya, uh, I would like to give you a floor, please. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos Yes, uh, I don't speak in English, so I read some words. And sorry, I don't speak <laughs> well, but uh, I try. Okay. Uh, first yeah, of all. I want to thank you once again for this recognition and for the opportunity to share our experience. Uh, I would like to remind, remind, remind your that this award, as well as other words I met at early childhood education are excellent motivators and uh, serve uh, as inspiration for the work of educators in this place, in this phase of education. With uh, though it was very important to give visibility to our project and to value the work of early childhood educators, uh, especially in Brazil, where this uh, appreciation is still low. Uh, I need to explain the little, the title of the project. The correct name is the Boa Nala Boa. Uh, which is an 
idiomatic expression is um, a local slang. It means everything is fine here in the lagoon. Uh, the title was one of a several suggested by the community and it was chosen by the children. We are, we were able to continue to the project and besides all the activities that you will see in the presentation video, uh, based on the children's illustrations, we produced a short video uh, that you can watch at the end and they published a book uh, that is being sold on amazon.com with the title is Crianças de Boa na Lagoa. Uh, teachers should to take care of nature. I I want to, to thank you very much. And you play the video, uh, then poderão entender <laughs> um pouquinho do projeto, ok? Thank you very much, Tanya. Uh, yes, we will share the video with you now. Uh, and I think that you will find it very inspiring. So please enjoy in the Boa na Lagoa. The Antonia Day Care is located in the lagoon of the João Aranha neighborhood in Paulinha. And our lagoon has a very large diversity of birds, alligators, herons, and trees. It's a very beautiful place that needs care. The community came to us in an attempt to revitalize the space. The first and the main activity was to take the children to know the lagoon, because nobody can love what they don't know. The specific objectives of this project are to develop the role of children, values such as citizenship, solidarity and participation in the community itself. Through the project, children become the main protagonist and help the community by participating using what they learn in the classroom. This project is based on the methodology of solidary learning whose purpose is precisely this partnership, this joint work. Who would have thought that the green figure of big eyes and thick skin could be so admirable? Kids, what are we gonna do there at the lagoon? The Nice at the Lagoon project was initiated in João Aranha community in Paulina City, São Paulo. The residents realized that very near them, there were some treasures that should be preserved. A yes from the daycare was enough, and everything became more colorful. The first step was to get to know the community better. Let's say the territory. Why? And certainly, everything that was seen was reproduced. The reality was incorporated through drawings and paintings. The idea of caring for the environment was also conveyed to the students. In fact, they were the ones who gave a common sense class. Yes. 
And there is the alligator again. He couldn't be left out in the recycling class. The students are protagonists in all the activities developed. And the concern is the valorization of the space we occupy here in the square for both the community and the school. And I'm feeling thrilled, accomplished for being part of this work with the children because we love the children and we always have the desire to do what is best for them. So it's not just the project that will appear to society in the eyes of others, but to know that we are doing what's best for the child to be aware of the environment, respect and citizenship. So there are lots of values, fields of experience that the child internalizes. They learn without knowing they're learning because it's entertainment. Everything is very pleasing. They like painting, planting, and how they learn. The kids planted trees, made a Lego wall, and even voted for the most beautiful drawing. Today, the Solidarity Learning Project in the Arts it's a reality. Children from birth to three years old become the protagonists of a story of transformation. Thank you very much. And now, Tanya, we should play another video. Sorry. Pesquisadora de projetos de educação infantil, projetos sustentáveis. Você conhece nessa né? lagoa? Não? Então você precisa conhecer. Isso é levou nós para ver a lagoa. Que tinha muita coisa para E muita coisa linda. A professora ficou assustada com muito lixo. Ela perguntou, o que nós vamos fazer, crianças? A criança tiveram uma ideia. Falar para o adulto que não pode pôr o lixo na lagoa. Papai não jogou o lixo na lagoa verde azul. Ó, oh, mamãe, não pode jogar isso no lago, então o Zacaré vai comer e vai morrer. Se, se a gente não cuidar da água, o que vai ser do peixinho? O que será do passarinho se nós não cuidar do, do ar? Se não cortarmos da terra, o que vai ser da plantinha? Nossa lagoa é muito linda. Se todo mundo cuidar dela, ela vai ficar mais bonita. A gente tem que proteger a natureza. E não cuidar do mundo, aonde a gente vai viver? So now we see also how the children's uh, voices are used to, to make adults aware of a uh, need for protection of our planet. Um, thank you very much, Tanya. Thank you.
thank you very much to your kindergarten and it was really i think very very inspiring for all uh, those who are listening today or who are uh, watching through youtube channel this presentation thank you and uh our, and Thank you. And our, another presentation is by Oyinda Samola from Nigeria. And she will, she will talk about uh, her, the Nigerian project, activity-based low-cost, no-cost initiative from ways to sustainable experiential play, learning, and development. So Oyinda, please, can you present yourself Thank you very much, Adina. Thank you for inviting me and uh, thank you for the recognition. Yes, I'm going to, can you hear me? Yes, we can, please. Yes, so my presentation is on activity-based, low-cost, no-cost initiative from waste to sustainable experiential play learning and development. And in this project, I have tried to integrate sustainable education into teaching, learning and play practice. Next slide. Andrena? Yes, thank you. So the inspiration came based on my interaction with uh, uh, my involvement in the Cambridge and the Deeping project. Uh, Cambridge and Deeping, they are an international organization, and they came into Nigeria to support the low cost schools, those schools that are charging the low $25 in a term, and who bring in children of poor parents. And in my interaction with these schools, I discovered the following gaps poor teaching strategies, lack of training for the teachers because they earn very poorly, the privation of children's right to play, lack of instructional materials or play resources, lack of skills and adequate knowledge of teachers in lesson planning and lesson delivery, and the lack of skills in engaging the learners in learning and getting them to be creative. Also lack of knowledge about the climate uh, change and sustainable education. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you. I have a picture here of one of the classes in one of those low cost schools where there are two classrooms in one room, uh, primary two on one side, primary three on the other side, and the division is with just a blackboard. So Everyone is hearing what the other teacher, and there's only one teacher who is teaching the children. And you could look at the environment that there is no structure. The walls are bare, and there are a lot of clutters around the classroom. Next slide. Here is another example of what I observed. This is a school, an uncompleted building. Children, there are no play equipment. Children are not allowed to come out to play. Here I am, they are trying to support the head of school, the owner of the school, to give them alternative ways by which children can play. And they don't have to go and buy expensive swings before children can play. So this was a situation of this school before we worked on the school. Next slide. The aim of the project is actually, uh, I highlighted it there, to provide the disadvantaged children, those from poor parentage, with access to quality education at low cost or no cost, which means they don't have to spend money or find education out of reach because they can't afford it. It's also to integrate the ESD and the low cost uh, um, initiatives into the curriculum 
and implementation of practices of schools. And also it's to promote the health and safety for all ages, because I discovered the environment of some of the schools has been unsafe for the children. There were cluttered areas with plastic bottles. There were heaps in dustbins, and uh, they didn't realize that these things were causing a lot of hazards. So part of the aim is to ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including amongst others, is sustainable lifestyle, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and non-violence, uh, global citizenship, and appreciation of cultural diversity of uh, uh, the different uh, cultures available. Next slide. Uh, yes. And the our ultimate is to enable educators to adopt and embed education for sustainable development principles and practices for transformation and positive change in care, support of children's play, in teaching and in learning. Also, we want to be able to achieve and enhance educators' knowledge and application of ESD curriculum content and cultural values and play experiences so that they don't have to start copying foreign ideas. Our culture is very rich and we have a lot of ideas and resources that we can use. So we are, we, uh, the aim and outcome is to get them to think outside the box and to reflect. And also we wanted the educators to adopt the active learning methodology in the planning and delivery of lessons and engagement of children in their learning. Because what I discovered when observing a lot of these teachers is that teaching was too directive. They lectured young children instead of getting them engaged in their learning. And I also wanted to be able to get educators to be more reflective in their practices. Next slide. So, Next slide. So what I decided to do, yes. I decided to identify the training needs based on my observation. I developed the content and the models that are relevant to the training needs of the different schools. Also, I outlined the training of trainers we create, I collaborated with a number of uh, facilitators that we could deliver the training. And we created, we started with the training of trainers, creating awareness, uh, the training of practitioners. And from onset, I included the ESD rating scale rubrics. Uh, this was to help them. After we have exposed them to basic training in ped uh, pedagogy, learning environment, uh, teaching strategies. We also train them on the use of uh, the ESD rating skills. And this is just to help them to appraise their learning centers and to know what, how they can improve on their curriculum and what they have. Uh, we also uh, prepared a curriculum in which we, we, we will train the parents uh, training of parents in the use of indigenous games, how they can play with their children. And we had training in schema play. I, we collaborated with Dr. John Siraj and we had training to expose the practitioners in different ways to look at the schema in children's uh, uh, play. So after the training, we decided to continue to allow the participants to indicate their interest, whether they want to continue in the project or not. And those that part, uh, indicated their interest, we decided to start the follow-up and the mentoring with such schools. Although for now, it's a bit slow because we are not able to get enough hands to do the follow-up with the different schools. But this is a stage, this is the implementation strategy that we have put in place that after training, 
and they indicate their interest, we follow up and mentor them until they become eco-friendly schools that is able to practice the curriculum and the pedagogy. Next slide. Next slide. I will not dwell on this because the project is in line with the Sustainable Development Goals 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, and 11. We make sure that in developing our curriculum content, we made use of this aspect so that we can run with it. And we also adopted the OMEP R seven RE words in adaptation. When we wanted to start encouraging them to integrate in the, uh, the practice into the curriculum. So we taught them how to adopt the RE words into their planning and design of their instructional materials. Next slide. These are picture, this is a picture of one of the workshops, the outcome of one of the workshops we had in which we are teaching engaging mathematics through the use of low cost waste resources. And we encourage the teachers to bring in waste materials, there are empty boxes, toilet roll boxes, tissue papers, uh, cardboard used materials and they were able to redesign to make their math concept of addition, subtraction, and they also use the bottle uh, tops, the, uh, the bottle covers, as you can see in that picture. So they were proudly showing off their products there. Next slide. This is another picture of a school that we actually gave an award to during our OMEP national conference in October last year. The, the school was able to run with the initiative. They mastered the ESD rating skill. They got the teachers to be in teams and they were constantly reflecting on their practices. The room on the left is the one you see that had the plastic toys. And within six months, nine months, they were able to transform that room into a room that had more of waste materials. If you look to the right, you will see children playing with the mats that are made with colored stones, or bottle covers, and on the walls, you could see some of the materials that have been posted to reflect uh, the under uh, the sea animals and some other materials. So the children are able to do the cult, uh, traditional games of jumping on numbers because they were able to use the tubble, uh, bottle tops to make numbers and to create some uh, beautiful patterns that they could play with. So they didn't need the plastic uh, toys that might even be an hazard later on to them. Next slide. This is another product of the initiative. We got uh, some of our OMEP member schools to also practice what they have learned in the training. And on my left, you could see the bottles that are being on to do counting. At the side, you could see bottle tops that have been made to create the map of Nigeria. And below it, you could see the flag of Nigeria with green, white, green. And they also used the bottle tops to create that. You could see some math concepts. You could see the art materials down. They created pictures of flowers. They were able to create uh, insects from different materials, plastics, ropes, and a lot of it. And also, if you see beside the bottles, they were able to make some dresses from just plastic, plastic, nylon plastics. On the right, we see the math concept where they have the numbers with the uh, ice cream spatules and the clock that they have used, uh, they, are, they have created 
everything is from waste, as you can see. So you are seeing a lot of concepts being represented in different aspects of the curriculum, uh, in mathematics, in art, in science, and in fashion, like the clothes that is on the left. Next slide. Here we have the picture of getting the children to participate in recreating their environments. The school that I talked about had the swings, iron swings, which was not healthy or safe for the children. And by the time we collaborated with uh, an environmentalist, uh, Jumoke, who is also partnering with us on this project, we, she decided to get the children to recreate their environment with old tires. So we have the children, you can see them carrying their tires, they are excited. They chose the colors they wanted to use to paint their tires. And then down on the right-hand side, they created climbers for themselves. And you can see the other one in which they can walk on top of it. So this is the way they started involving the children in their own transformation. The children transformed their environment themselves and they became so happy about it. Next slide. This is the outcome where to make it clearer, you can see the tires, the way they have been arranged. You can see the iron swings at the extreme end. And the funny thing is that the children later on discarded the iron swings and concentrated on the uh, tires that have become their play equipment. You can see the climbers. And if you move, my, um, Adrina, move to the next slide. Next slide. Yes. Uh, here is an example of the way we train the trainers. We give, put them through experiential learning. Here is, okay, okay. This one is where the children started their own garden. You know, there was a lot. But <laughs> this is where the children started their own garden because they realized that if, for us not to starve, to have enough food, we needed to plant. And the children were involved in the gardening and they were also involved in monitoring their garden, their plants. They were measuring the height. They were doing a lot of things. And this one they shared with the parents and the parents also decided to use uh, bags and some uh, mobile things. Even where they don't have a garden as such, they knew that they could use some bags to make their own plants, to plant their own vegetables. And this is the effect of what happened in the school. You could see the way the children are collaborating and working together. Next slide. Next slide. Now, we also looked at the three dimensions of sustainability, and we trained the teachers in that aspect. And this school was successfully able to implement the dimension of environmental sustainability. They invited, they invited the parents to go with the student, the children to a zoo where they looked at animals, the animals that were almost going to extinct. How can we save the animals? The, the picture on the right hand side, the, the children were looking at the river. They were looking at the they were counting the number of fishes coming up the river. And then they started thinking, how can we keep our rivers and oceans clean? How can the fishes be protected from toxic waste? So this started bringing up questions in the children and their teachers and even their parents who followed them. The parents saw, uh, they were so excited with this experience because they never had that, their, their awareness was open to their environment. So next slide.
Next slide. This is where we started encouraging OMEP member schools to start integrating the initiative into their curriculum. And they, we started exposing them to how they can use waste materials to recreate instructional materials. So you can see that from the cardboard, the glue, the cotton buds, they are able to make the men shapes the shapes of a man or a woman. And then they were able to tell stories from this. They had the cotton birds to make the nose, the hair, and the children were absolutely excited about all these things that they are enabled to do. And this is what we are trying to achieve, that we are not loading our children with just information, but we are giving them the opportunity to think themselves and be reflective and to be they want to influence the change in their environment. Next slide. This is another one where they are planning to make the man figure. You could see what the two of them are doing. They are working together. They are communicating. There is and eye coordination because they are working, sticking the cutting buds and drawing and writing and labeling the shapes. So there's a lot of skills and learning going on here. And there's space management and teamwork. Next slide. This one is one in which I really love because the, uh, the teacher, when she learned about from a waste to sustainable development, she decided she was not going to be throwing away the pencil shavings. So what she did was to teach the different shapes with the pencil shavings instead of throwing it away. So she put the glue, she drew the shapes, triangle, circle, uh, all different shapes. She now put the glue in the middle and she poured the pencil shavings to make the shapes to come out. So this, are part of, this is part of the creativity that we are encouraging our teachers to engage in and our children to also participate in. Next slide. This is also part of what our children have been able to make from the initiative. They used matchsticks to make houses. And you can see the children very and they're engrossed in their work. They are so, you know, they are paying close attention to the work. And on the right, the children are showing off their work. Next slide. This is art and craft, there's language communication. And this one is a beautiful one in which they did a presentation of my country. <laughs> that is, the bottle uh, tops are used to differentiate the different uh, areas, the regions of Nigeria with different colors. And we have the green, white, green flag. We have our money posted below. And then we have the president and the vice president beside the, uh, the Nigerian uh, map. Next slide. And everything we used, bottle tops, uh, color uh, crayons and all that. This also is about the life cycle of a butterfly. And you can see the way the, the waste is being used creatively. This is science and the children came up with this. This one has to do with games. Yes, you can move to the next one, Adrina. Move to the next slide. This one is a science. This one is where we are using our culture to teach some learning skills. This game is translated in English is who is in the garden. And we have somebody inside the circle. We have somebody outside the circle trying to get in, to get the person inside. And then you see the children holding on tight just to stop that person outside from getting inside. And the teachers themselves are involved in the game on the right, in the outdoor game. 
and we've been able to get them to dis, uh, create different games, linking them to different objectives and learning outcomes. Next slide. Here is the, so, uh, I'm getting to the end of it. We, uh, we've been able to create the curriculum content area, the ESD focus area, and the skills and learning outcomes area. And the teachers, as they practice more, are able to identify more learning outcomes from every game or materials that they use in the teaching and learning process or in the play experience of their children. And what we've observed also is that schools are beginning to expose their children more to outdoor experiences in teaching of mathematics, in teaching of literacy and other subject areas. Next slide. Yes. And we realized from the outcomes, the impact of our teaching and learning over time, although the project is ongoing, and we want to be able to make sure we follow up with the schools that have been participating. Once we are able to get the right support and train the mentors and those to follow up. We observe that the teachers that were trained had better understanding of how children learn through play. They're able to support children's play and learning in more active and engaging ways. Teachers uh, were more resourceful during lessons. They did not just lecture, but they allowed the children to be active participants in their learning. The teachers were more creative. They created more resources, not just talking in their lessons. And they allowed the children to engage with the resources. The teachers were also able to use variety of teaching strategies in their lessons, not just sitting on one spot, but the children could come up and go into groups to discuss. Children were more involved in their learning and more expressive in their language. There was increased awareness about elements of high quality programs by the owners of schools and the teachers themselves. Then in the learning environment, some schools have made changes like the schools I showed you in their indoor learning and their outdoor environment by improvising with waste materials. And concerning academic leadership, school administrators and teaching staff have become more reflective in their practices through team work and review meetings. And also there's improvement in quality of instructional material, uh, instructional leadership of heads of schools. They are more supportive. They are not just saying, no, you can't do this, but they now have better understanding of what needs to be done. So that's the bit I'm able to show concerning the transformative process of the activity-based low-cost, low-cost initiatives in Nigeria. And we are hoping that we can continue to build on it and get more schools to receive the award on the ECHO, uh, OMEP Nigeria Eco-Friendly Schools. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Andrena, over to you. And thank you very much, uh, Oinda, for this inspiring uh, process of changes. So um, we have one question in the chat for you. Uh, Tanya would like to know, um, how many students are at the school and how old are they? I suppose the schools that you show us. Okay, in that school, uh, they are nursery because we ask them to focus just on the nursery. The, the school is a nursery and primary school. Uh, they have about uh, 120 children in the whole. Yes. Thank you. Uh... Okay, we have more questions about the language issues, but I see Camilla is um, 
is um, answering. So uh, this webinar will be available with translation at the uh, web uh, at the OMEP web page. So I would like to thank uh, Oyinda and Tanya to join us, uh, as well as uh, Camila for supporting us from the back, and for uh, to thanks to all OMEP members that are very keen to to support children in education for sustainability. I would take opportunity to invite you all on our next webinar, which will be on Friday at one o'clock uh, Central European time, Central European summer time, sorry. And um, we will have like introduction and inspiration to our new OMEP World Award. So we will have uh, two scholars from Sweden, Niklas Pramling and Cecilia Wallerstadt. They will um, share with us uh, their research on play. And we, with this year's award, we would like to introduce play into ESD. So maybe Ingrid, you would like to add something? Well, I will only add that there are some links in the when it was sent out, where you can see the videos beforehand, because the, the whole idea is actually to discuss. They will have a short presentation, but they have, there are already two videos, one from Niklas and one from Cecilia. And it's very good if you have looked at that and can reflect about your own work you're doing this year and you want to send in as an award. How can you bring play and the child's world into to it? I think that's, and I think we saw with, with uh, Tanya how they bro also brought children's uh, voices into it, and we think that's important and to relate play and and uh, learning into it. So it will be a discussion, and hopefully you will come up with a lot of nice questions, and we can discuss it. And and these films will be the videos are in English, but they will be translated if I understand it right, uh, Mercedes, because we have. We have got, I have sent the text now, but they would not be, be possible before Friday. But later on, you will be possible to access it with your own language. So thank, thank you. you. I hope to see many people on Friday. Yes, and I, I would like to see many applications for the ESD Awards 2023, not just the one from practitioner and researchers, but as well from the students. So we do have two calls. Please join us on Friday. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, web page, uh, and many, many other resources. And uh, join us. If you, if you are not still members of OMEP, please find your national committee and join us because we are the, the greatest community for early childhood 